Hey, what's up, YouTube? Uh, how you doing today? Uh, I was talking to my watchmaker, and uh, he was talking about how he went to Swatch Group in New Jersey um, and did some training over there on the uh, coaxial uh, omegas. And um, he was talking about how the coaxial 9300 movement with the silicon uh, hairspring... Um, how that's actually a great movement, awesome movement. I, I've seen some things on the internet, you know, about people, some different reviews about people talking about how the silicon hairspring is going to end up, you know, breaking, cracking, or whatever. Well, he told me that uh, the guy that was uh, the instructor uh, was demonstrating uh, with the 9300 movement. He had it out of the case, of course, and it was just sitting there running. And what he did was he took the took a pair of tweezers and he unbolted. First, he unbolted the the hairspring and the bridge, and he took a pair of tweezers and just grabbed the main spring or the hairspring and just pulled it straight up. Okay, and that thing did not break. Okay, and he grabbed it with with without even looking at it. He was looking at the you know his his peers there, and he just ripped this thing straight up. And everyone was, uh, you know, in awe, like, what the hell are you doing? And uh, it didn't break, uh, didn't stretch, didn't do anything. He set it back in the movement, it went back into form, and he bolted back up and it continued to run, okay? No rate change, nothing, okay? Uh, this is straight from my watchmaker's mouth. This is what he told me. It was really interesting stuff. Um, he said it showed them uh, take a magnet to it. Uh, didn't change anything, okay, with the magnet. He took it to a regular mainspring and uh, or yeah, hair or hairspring, and of course it changed it. It messed it all up, okay. So Omega is really onto something here. Um, he told me that, which I really don't want to admit to, but he told me that, and this guy's a, a Rolex lover, okay. He says that Rolex is a little bit behind. Uh, he says that their blue hairspring isn't really as, it, you know technology wise isn't as as far as omega is um the silicon hairspring i guess it's yet to be seen but from what he's what he knows and from what was demonstrated to him it's it's a you know damn good uh it's it's damn good technology it's in a good movement um I know that I had an Aqua Terra with an 8500 movement, one of the you know early 8500 movements, and it was very accurate. Uh, but it didn't have the si the silicon hairspring. It was you know the regular hairspring. Okay, so I ended up selling it. You know, flipped it, got some other watch. Uh, I think I flipped it and got a Submariner or something like that. But anyway, the 9300 movement or 8500 movements, anything that has the silicon hairspring, that's something to look into. Uh, for use it for those of you that have them, uh, email me or you know uh, comment on this video and let me know what your opinions and thoughts are of them. But um, Omega in-house stuff, real in-house stuff, is becoming you know pretty nice, and um, it's something to look into. You know, I mean, I know I don't. You know, I know I talk about how I don't like ETA automatics, and for many reasons, I've had a lot of them, and. Um, I thought Rolex, or I think Rolex is far superior, but this 8500 and 9300, all the Omega, true Omega in-house movements that they've built around the actual coaxial, um, you know, technology, I think that's probably a step in the right direction for them. So um, anyway, you know, let me know. Please subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions for me, email me. Hope you enjoyed my video. Thank you very much. Take care. Have a good day or good night. Bye-bye.